Welcome to the Chef's Table series. My name is Carol O'Connor, co-host of this instructional cooking show for you, the home cook. Today we are featuring chef owner Christopher Lynn of the Seven Star Street Bistro located in Roslindale. He will be making three delicious, healthy meals. The first one is garlic and bok choy. Secondly, pork and Thai basil. And thirdly, my favorite, the shrimp and tofu egg roll with a special sauce. Later on in the show, we'll have a beer pairing, a wine pairing, and other exciting segments. So let's go over to Joe and Christopher to learn how to make these dishes. I'd like to welcome you to the Chef's Table series cooking show. This show is produced by the Chef's Table Foundation, a foundation dedicated to supporting young adults that may be underprivileged or in need of a helping hand. And what we're trying to do is raise awareness to this segment of our population. And we have decided we are going to support young underprivileged if they would like to go to a culinary school, we'll be taking applications within the next couple of months so that we can support them with the cost of their education. Having said that, I'm very pleased to have an old friend, Chef Chris Lynn from Seven Star Street Bistro. And Chef Chris, thanks very much for coming. Uh, thanks for having me, Jeff. Great. Yeah, uh, Chef, three, uh, two years ago, did a three-show series with us uh, during the Chinese New Year, and I got to tell you, his food was is it's just fabulous, to the point where I actually cook some of the recipes and great. So, Chris, uh, Chef Chris, you know, his father was owned a restaurant in Newton for 20 years. Yep, about 20, 25 years. 25 years. I believe, if I remember correctly, he was from Taiwan or? Yeah, he's from Taiwan. And Ta the, the restaurant was called Seven Star Mandarin House. Okay, great. So he had a great mentor, but you also went to culinary school in the West Coast, correct? That's correct, yep. I went to culinary school in San Francisco. Right. So anyways, he decided to follow his father's uh, footsteps, and, uh, and I'm glad he did because I love his food. So today, Chef, what are we going to be making? Uh, so today we're going to start off with uh, wok toss bok choy um, with sliced garlic. So it's a really simple, healthy dish. Um, it's really easy to prepare. Right. So it's, it's easy to, to translate to the home kitchen. Um, just steamed bok choy. The seasonings that we're using today are all vegetarian. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, and it's also gluten-free, which is great because I know a lot of people are doing gluten-free these days. Okay, and then we're going to do several other dishes, correct? Yeah, and then we're going to do a sliced pork with Thai basil, um, and we're going to finish up with a, a shrimp and tofu spring roll. Excellent. Well, Chef, I always talk about mise en place, so for you, the home chef, you, if you've been watching this show, you know this is a critical step in cooking, and it's called mise en place. And mise en place simply means have everything in its place. So, chef, as I lift this, what is this? So uh, this is uh, really important in Chinese cooking. It's a cornstarch slurry. Um, it's what we use to thicken, um, thicken the sauces. Right. Um, this is just some ground white pepper. Right. And white pepper is very common in, in the Asian cuisine, correct? Yeah, I, I, I like the, the flavor of, of white pepper, and right. it's got a milder finish to it. Okay. These are just black sesame seeds. We're going to use these for a, for a garnish. Okay. And sliced garlic clove. Okay. Sugar. This is it, white, just white sugar. Okay. And what is this? And this is a great ingredient. It's um. Ah, it's, mushroom. It's, it's mushroom seasoning. I know you love the mushroom I, seasoning. I love this um, seasoning. So it's um, basically it's freeze-dried shiitake mushrooms with a little bit of salt. So Yeah, and, and you know, after Chef introduced me to this two years ago, uh, I had to go into an Asian store in the South End, but I bought 
three pouches. I think they're one pound pouches. Yeah, something like that. Maybe. And I've got to tell you, if you're looking for an ingredient that'll kick up many, many dishes, that uh, dried uh, mushroom seasoning is incredible. And I do know a couple of very well-known chefs that don't cook Asian, but they use this. It's great in soups. It's just great in sauces. So it's a fabulous ingredient. That's yeah, great. I mean, it's, a ve it's vegetarian and yeah. you know, it gives a nice burst of umami. So Great, great. You know, to me, bok choy, I always thought it was a bitter, but these baby bok choys are fabulous. Yeah, they're almost a little bit sweet once, yeah, they're, uh, once right, they're cooked. So. Right. So we're going to start out. We, we have the, um, the bok choy um, already picked. And um, I pull the leaves apart and give it a, a good wash through a couple times just to get all the sand out. Sometimes it can, uh, there can be sand in, in the stem. Right. Um, so I always do that with most of my vegetables, but particularly cabbage. Mm -hmm. um, and we have, the, we have the water boiling. So we're right. just going to, as you said, we're going to give it a, a good blanch. Right. Okay, that's great. Um, so we're letting this wilt. Yep. And then what would be the next step once that's wilted enough or blanched long enough? Mm -hmm. So the next step is we can uh, we can get the pan going. Okay. Um, right. Great. Um, so we're gonna just get the pan heated. Mm -hmm. um, it's always good to get the the pan nice and hot before you add the the oil to it. Right. Um, you know, it also helps when you're not using a nonstick pan, that it helps uh, create a, a nonstick surface. Right. Yeah, Chef just gave you a great tip. If that pan is hot enough, okay, uh, what it'll do is, you ever try to cook, for instance, like a piece of fish and you put it in, or a hamburger, and all of a sudden you want to move it while it's sticking. If that pan is hot, and it generally it'll It'll brown or caramelize or create a nonstick surface. But I remember Chef used a pan like this before on a show he did with us, and it's a Teflon wok. So for the home chef, I think that's a great tool to have. Yeah, it just makes things easier at home. You know, in, in the restaurant, we have a cast iron wok, and we, yeah. have, we use a flame that's 150,000 BTU. So right. we get that right. pan nonstick pretty quickly. Right. Um, but in, at, at home, most people don't have that type of setup. Well, then so. that brings me to a question. If you've never been in a kitchen in a Chinese restaurant, that 150,000 uh, BTUs, mm -hmm. it almost looks to me and sounds like a jet engine. It actually literally is a jet burner. So, it is, yeah. okay. And that's because the Asian technique is quick fry, quick stir yeah, fry. Yeah, everything's fast, fast you know, right. high heat. Um, so we're gonna use, uh, it's, it's high heat we have, um, and now that the pan's nice and it's getting right. nice and hot, we're gonna add the oil, right. and I'm gonna I'm gonna reduce the flame just a little bit. Right. Um, now you're using a canola, a salad oil. Yeah, so we're using soybean oil or canola so, oil. These things are interchangeable. Right. Um, the reason we're using that is because it has uh, very idea. little flavor, okay. um, so it's not gonna f add extra flavor to the dish. Um, mm -hmm. And it has a very high smoking temperature, right. so it's not going to burn and give right. um, right. kind of that that yeah. burnt carbon flavor to, to right. the Right, which is a, he just gave you a great tip. You know, the soy oil will not add any flavor to the dish, and everything in Asian cooking is about balance, right? That's right. Okay, so now that the pan's hot, I had to turn it down a little bit because yeah. it was getting uh, it was getting a little bit hot. Yeah. But we're just going to add the the sliced garlic right. to the pan. Now, sh Chef, when you're doing this sliced garlic, and I always mention this on the show, keep an eye on the garlic. You do not want it to burn because you cannot recover when it comes to garlic if it burns. And it just makes your finished dish very bitter. So I'm guessing like most cuisines that use garlic, whether it's Italian, Indian, do you get it a little bit golden color? Yeah, just a golden co color. And basically what you're trying to do is just, you know, sweat the garlic a little bit, right. get some of the acidity and some of the, um, you know, some of the bite out of it. Right. So it's a little right. bit yeah, more palatable. I can see that is... Yeah, so it's just about ready. Right, okay. And the, uh, the bok choy should be nice and blanched now. Mm -hmm. 
We're just adding the, um, the blanched bok choy to the pan. Wow. You know, I always talk about this on the show. I know home chefs that say, oh, I don't like to get the pan too hot. That is a mistake because if you have a really hot pan, you're going to bring out those sugars, those flavors, and, and it's really going to add to your dish. You don't want to burn what's in there, but if you have to take that off the burner, take it right off the burner, let it come down in temperature, and, and you know, that way they're not burning, but you're drawing out all those flavors. Sorry about that. Chef. No worries. Okay. Um, so now we're actually just going to take some of the, um, the liquid, that, the, you know, some of the water that we use to blanch the bok choy. Right. Um, I always like to, you know, reuse as much as possible. Right. And we just boiled the bok choy in some water, yeah. and now it's full of flavor. So we're using that. And um, use about uh, maybe about a half of a cup of water. Okay. Um, once you have the, the liquid in the pan, you don't have to worry about the, um, the bok choy, in this case, burning. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's got plenty of liquid in there to protect it. Right. Um, we're going to add about a tablespoon, a tablespoon of the mushroom seasoning um, in order to... This, I'm telling you, if you have an opportunity to go to an Asian store, this seasoning is incredible, what it can do for you. And dish. if you don't have mushroom seasoning, you can just use salt. Um, and again, you, you want to balance it out with the, the sugar. So mm -hmm. we're going to use about half a tablespoon of sugar. Okay. And then again, we're just going to let it cook for a little bit. And I got to tell you, these aromas are starting to really build, so it's great. Now, you notice what Chef just did? He's watching his pan. He has a hot pan, so that bit of water is reducing. He needs the water so that the, the bok choy won't burn in the garlic, but he also needs enough liquid in there to make his garlic sauce, right? Right, that's exactly correct. Um, now we're going to use the the cornstarch slurry. So what right. it is is one part cornstarch to one part water. Right. Um, and you know, the cornstarch starts to separate from the water a little bit if it sits. Right. So you just use a fork or a whisk, whatever you have right. um, yeah. handy, and, and blend it nicely together. Yeah, and Chef just, believe me, gave you just a really good tip. When that sits for, for five, 10 minutes, all of a sudden you'll get a clump on the bottom of the water. All right, it'll still be white and it'll look like a slurry, but take that fork and mix it back in. Otherwise, you're gonna wind up with lumps. But it's a, I've used this for gravies, many things. And okay. I always use flour or something, but now a lot of times I'll grab that. Definitely. It works great. Um, once the, um, you know, the flavors start to infuse, you can add, um, we have, uh, cooking sherry and toasted sesame oil, just to give a little bit more flavor. Right. So you just give it a little bit, a, a little squirt right. of both. Um, mix it around. Mm. And then right before we add the slurry to thicken the sauce, mm -hmm. we're going to add just a pinch of, uh, of white pepper. Okay. And white pepper um, we use just because it has a more mild flavor. Um, yeah. You know, it's not, not quite as sharp as, um, you know, black. black pepper. Yeah. Oh, this is really... And right before you yeah. add the slurry, you can, you can get the, um, the temperature up in the pan. Because mm -hmm. the, the slurry acts as a, as a thickening agent right. and it, it reacts to the heat. So you just want to add about, um, maybe about a tablespoon. When you go to the Chef's Table Series .tv website, the show will be there as well as the recipe. So, you know, even on seasonings, I keep telling people, you are the chef. You know that you may like something a little bit more pepper than maybe chef is using, or a little bit more garlic. It's a creative process, and that's why they call it culinary arts. So don't be afraid to experiment. Okay, so now we've added the cornstarch slurry. The sauce is at the right uh, consistency, mm -hmm. and uh, we're ready to plate. Okay, great. Well, we have a plate here, and here you have some tongs. So, do you want to just you 
use this saw. Do you want me to plate it right here? Sure. Great. Okay. You know, another thing I want you to notice, the color of this bok choy is so green. It's so inviting. When you look at this dish, it is fabulous. And you can see that the consistency of the sauce is, is a little bit thicker, and that's just because when you're using a you know, slick vegetable, it helps the flavor and the sauce adhere to the vegetable. Excellent. And then lastly, we're just, you know, just for a little garnish, we're gonna add some black toasted sesame seeds just to oh, give it a little great. bit of a contrast. In now, you, when you toast these seeds, mm -hmm. what do you do it, in a saute? Um, yeah, you could do it in a saute pan. Right, and it's just really- Just a dry saute pan. Yeah, just really give them a light, a deeper color and bring it out some more of the oils and whatever, so. Right. That is a great looking dish. Okay. I'm gonna move that back, chef, and you can just place that right there, great. which is great. Okay, so what are we gonna do next? So now we're gonna prepare for the next dish. We're gonna okay. do the sliced pork with Thai basil. Okay. This is a Chinese shredded pork? It's a sliced pork with, uh, with Thai basil. With Thai basil, great. And we have some new ingredients here. Uh, obviously, we have the sliced pork. Yep. And what's this? This is just um, red and green chopped bell peppers. Okay. Um, you know, for great. a nice color. Yeah. Um, here we have um, some homemade chili oil. So it's just um, chili flakes that are just, you know, lightly sauteed in, in oil. Um, to bring out their flavor. Yeah. This is a, a soy sauce blend. Okay. Um, it's, uh, t we use uh, double black soy sauce and thin soy sauce in the restaurant. So this is a blend, but at home you could definitely substitute, you know, a traditional soy sauce. Okay, great. Yeah, I like myself, I found your regular soy sauce, for me, for my palate, tends to be a little bit too salty. I like the light, uh, the low sodium soy sauce. In when I'm cooking some of these dishes. Sure, you can, you can always, you could use any soy sauce you want. You could use a gluten-free soy sauce. I mean, they're all pretty, they have different flavors, but they'll, right. they'll all do the trick. Okay, great. So, are there any other new ingredients here? Yeah, so we have a hoisin sauce. Okay. Um, we have some sliced um, white onions. Right, and that has a mixture of garlic and ginger in there, correct? Yep. So there's minced garlic, minced ginger, right. and uh, minced scallion whites. So it's kind of like uh, Chinese aromatics. Right, right, okay, that's great. And then the last ingredient that we have is some um, uh, Thai basil. Oh, so um, it's already been picked and right. ready now, to go. Now, on the Thai basil, is that something that the home cook can find in a supermarket? Or? Um, not every supermarket carries Thai basil, but you could definitely substitute, um, you know, regular basil. With for it. Okay, great. It, it works pretty much the same way. Okay. So once again, we're going to get the pan nice and hot before we add the oil. And uh, we're using soybean oil again to, to get things started. Right. Um, this is a great wok pan, really, for the home cook. Because it'll sit right on your regular gas burner, and you're not going to have a major stick problem. So, right, yeah. I remember when my father uh, retired from his restaurant, yeah. he, he had a, a tough time translating, um, you know, his restaurant cooking to the home kitchen, and he, you know, he fell in love with using the nonstick wok. So. Great. Um, so now the pan's got, you know, it's, it's nice and hot. We're going to add a little bit of the soybean oil. Excellent. Probably about a tablespoon. I was just going to say, it's about, it looks like a tablespoon. And we're going to do a one pot or one pan meal. Um, that's the beauty of using a wok. Right. Um, we have the pork that's already been sliced, you know, fairly thin. Mm -hmm. um, we marinated it with a little bit of oil, again, soybean oil, okay. um, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of white pepper. Mm -hmm. um, the reason we add the oil is because we want it to get in between the slices of the pork so that it doesn't it all stick, stick together. Right. In other words, when you throw it in the pan, so you're going to get an even cook. That would yeah, exactly. And then that way that because it's sliced very thin, right. you don't want the folds to get stuck over each other. That's nice. And again, talking about a hot pan, you can hear this pan, it's crackling, it's smoking, and it's great, good and hot. So you're gonna get some nice caramelization, and that's gonna increase the flavor in your finished product. And it smells great. Now I've reduced the heat a little bit, just to, to about a medium heat. 
so we don't um, burn. You know, don't burn the, the pork. All right. So, chef, you started with your sliced pork. Yep. All right. Why did you start with the sliced pork? Because it takes the longest to it cook. Does. Okay. So, when you're cooking, just remember, if you've had enough experience, and if you don't, you'll find out quickly. Always go with the ingredient that takes the longest to cook. That's right. Once you get um, some nice browning on, on the pork, you can add um, the, as I said, the Chinese aromatics. So the sliced onion uh, with the ground ginger, um, garlic, and scallion whites. Right. I'd like to just make a comment about the garlic and ginger. In Asian cooking, because two weeks ago we had a Thai chef on, and they use the garlic and ginger, and they ground and they mix together. Mm -hmm. Is it an equal garlic? So it's ginger? just one-third garlic, uh, one-third scallion white, and one-third one ginger. Okay, great. So that's your ratio. But again, ginger garlic is very common in Asian cooking, and it's a nice blend. It, it really brings a lot of flavor to your yes. dish. Yes. Uh, you know, almost everything that we, um, almost everything we make, we, we use a lot of those ingredients. Right. It, it has right. such a nice um, flavor right. to it. Once the onions get a good sweat, we're going to add the, um, the chopped red and green bell peppers. Right. And a lot, and I remember this from shooting with Chef Chris before, it's not only the food taste great, but color, aesthetic, how the dish looks. By adding in these red and green peppers, you have the caramelization going on the meat, so now you're really developing a great looking dish that will obviously taste good as well. Yeah, definitely, and people definitely eat with their eyes. So, I yeah. mean, when, right. I, when a dish looks good and it tastes good right. together, it, right. makes an, it really helps the dish uh, come together. Okay, so. Now, you just want to saute the, um, yeah. the vegetables for a couple minutes so they come, you know, they're nice and tender right. and just about cooked through. Right. But you still, I'd like to use the word al dente. Yeah. Like a, you want a little bit of bite to that. You don't want them soft or soggy. Is that correct? Or? Yeah, you want, you want, I mean, generally that's what we try and do, but you can really... Um, you know, some people like onions cooked through and their peppers yeah. cooked through. Right. You can choose however you want to. Um, okay. You want it to come out. Right. Once you have a nice sweat going with the vegetables and they're they're starting to get tender. Yeah. You can add the um, the Thai basil. Very good. And just let that wilt a little bit in the pan. Yeah. The aromas are fantastic. But while you're doing that, I have a quick question. The uh, the pepper flakes that you sauteed with a little bit of oil, mm -hmm. those are hot, correct? Yeah, they are spicy. Yeah. Speaking of which, that's the, the next ingredient uh, okay. that we're going to be adding. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can use as, as much or as little of the pepper flakes right. as you want. It depends, yeah. um, you know, how sp spicy you like it. Yeah. I know Joe loves, loves the spicy no, food, right? right. <laughs> yeah, I like just a hint. Being Irish American, when I add something hot like that, I break out into a sweat. <laughs> okay, so once the aromatics are starting to come together, we have the Thai basil in there. We just right. added the chili flakes. The Thai basil is starting to wilt. Yeah. Um, that's when we're going to add the base for the sauce. In this case, we're just using water. You can use whatever type of uh, liquid you want. You know, a, a stock, if you have a vegetable stock or... Um, a meat right. stock, right. Um, you know, it's really um, chef's choice. Right. We're adding about, about half a cup. Okay, and while chef is doing that, if you recall on the first dish he made, you could retain that water because it is a very light vegetable stock, but that would also add some flavor to this dish. Sure. This is gonna be a soy-based sauce or a brown sauce. Yeah. Um, we're going to add some other ingredients to it, right. but uh, once we have the, the stock or the water going in the pan and it's nice and hot, we're going to add a little less than a, a tablespoon of, um, of soy sauce. Right. And once again, you can use a gluten-free soy sauce, you can use a Japanese-style tamari, mm -hmm. uh, low, sodium, low sodium soy sauce. Okay. Now, Chef, I, I just trying to recall, you did not add salt to this. Not yet, no. Nope. Okay. Good point though, because uh, soy sauce has you know sodium in it, so right. you wanna you wanna be aware of that. Right. 
and, and that's the point. Before you add any salt, I suggest just take a piece of whatever. Your palate will tell you, do you need salt? You may not. Now, is that just slurry or water? That's water. Okay, great. I'm just adding a little bit more, because as the water starts to evaporate, you know, I want to add more so that yeah. there's some substance left for the sauce. Right. Now we're going to add again the, the mushroom seasoning. This gives a nice burst of umami to the dish. About, yeah. um, you know, a little bit less than a tablespoon. You can add more mushroom seasoning and more yeah. of the dry ingredients as you increase the volume of water. So if you want a very saucy dish and you, yeah. you add about a cup of water, right. you, you'd want to add more of these. Okay. But you always want to add more of the mushroom seasoning yeah. than the white sugar that I'm about to use. The reason being is, you know, in this case, we're, we're making a savory dish right. and we want the, the sugars just to balance out the, the saltiness right. of, the, of right. the soy. Right. We added a little bit less than a tablespoon of sugar. Yeah, and you're, back, you're, you're creating that balance. Definitely. between sweet and savory. We have here right. cooking sherry and a toasted sesame oil. Um, we're gonna add in a minute, but we're gonna kind of boost the sauce, give it a nice um, kind of sweetness to it. We're adding about a tablespoon of poison. This looks great. Uh, the cooking sherry that Chef's using, I've used white wine. If you like a particular wine, you know, the technique is whatever you like to drink is the wine you can use for cooking. So that's up to you. All right, now you're adding a slurry. Yep, now we're adding the slurry just to get the sauce to our desired thickness. Right, you know the chef is stirring that slurry again to break out up any clumping, and that's gonna make a, a, a really great sauce. Excellent, so. Once you reach the desired consistency of the sauce where it yeah. adheres nicely to all the ingredients, right. you're ready to plate. Excellent. Oh, this smells wonderful. We do have an audience today, and I'm guessing, are they moving towards me now? No? Okay, good. <laughs> it smells absolutely delicious. So here we have the pork with Thai basil, and we're ready to prep the next dish. Excellent. All right, our next dish is going to be... Shrimp and tofu spring rolls. Excellent. Okay, we're going to give you a quick education in rolling a spring roll. But why don't you talk about the filling first, which is shrimp and tofu, correct? Yep, so what it is, the, the ingredients we have here, we have a uh, one block of firm tofu, um, some chopped scallions, we have some dry cornstarch, um, some shrimp, raw shrimp, peel, uh, peeled, deveined with right. the tail off. Right. Um, here we have some chopped water chestnuts, mm. and this is an example of what the water chestnut looks like whole, if you're gonna uh, look for it in, in your supermarket. Basically, you just peel it um, mm. like a miniature carrot or something, mm. and then chop it. Um, right. You know, you, you want it chopped pretty finely, but right. not, not minced. You still, you know, right. it's in the dish for texture. Okay. Now, on the green onion, which is also known as a scallion, do you use the whole, the white and the green, or? No, in this case, we're just using the green. It's a little bit sweeter. It's not yeah. as, I guess, spicy. Or... Right, so Chef just gave you a tip. If you want to try these, use the green part of your scallion, or AKA green onion. All Most right. of the time, the green part is kind of like the finishing part of the onion, right. whereas the white part, you can kind of use like a traditional onion when you're sauteing and, and okay. cooking it. Great. So when you get all the ingredients together, basically you want to chop the Chop the shrimp pretty finely. Um, mix it with the water chestnuts. Um, about a tablespoon of the mushroom seasoning. Um, again, a little bit less of sugar. Um, a pinch of white pepper. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you just take the tofu in your hand and you break it up. Okay. So you don't need to use a knife. It's nice and right. soft and just now, comes apart okay. pretty easily. Chef, on that tofu, is that an extra stiff or? Or uh, extra firm, I guess, or uh, firm? Do yes, so good question. There's different types of tofu. Um, in this case, we're using a firm tofu, which is still a pretty soft tofu. Right. Um, but we are using firm as opposed to silken or right. uh, a firmer tofu, like pressed tofu. Okay. Um, so right. it still comes apart pretty easily. Okay. So you're dicing up the shrimp. Mm hmm you're dicing up the water chestnut. The water chestnut, yeah. And then you're slicing the uh, scallion. 
So it, you're adding the seasonings. It's kind of like making a uh, Chinese meatball filling, if uh, you would, or a Chinese meatloaf, okay. but with shrimp in this case. Right. So, Mike, what I wanted to get to for the viewing audience, you're mixing this pretty much by hand. Mixing it by hand, and what we're using is when you mix the shrimp with the, with the water chestnuts, um, you're gonna add a little bit of sesame oil. It's gonna be pretty um, soft, and it's not gonna really adhere together. So, um, in this case, what you're gonna do is add the dry cornstarch to the mixture until it just kind of comes, comes together, together and right. is nice and it's gonna kind of stick. Okay, great. Well, we have a Chinese meatball uh, mix, but I want you to know, I am going to take, while you're working there, I wanna take the opportunity to let our viewing audience know. We're filming this show in the Sons of Italy Lodge in Roslindale, and they've been gracious hosts for us. Okay, let's okay, go. Okay, great. Chef. So I'm going to show you now how to um, how to make the okay. I'll move how that. to make the spring roll, how to form them. Okay. So we're also going to use an, an egg wash. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a one whole egg beaten pretty right. pretty well. The egg wash in this case is just going to be used as like an adhesive for right. the for the spring roll wrapper. So that that once you fill it, you're talking on the edge. You put a little egg wash. And just so you know, rather than make it, I just tend to buy it. It's a lot easier. And you can usually find these in your traditional supermarket, I believe. Oh, uh, yeah, an Asian supermarket would definitely carry this. Yeah. They're pretty thin sheets, yeah. um, so you just want to be careful, you know, right. not to rip them. Okay. And you're going to, again, take about a tablespoon of filling. Mm -hmm. You know, on filling, you don't want to overfill because it becomes very difficult to get a good seal. And again, you want um, you want it to, you don't want it too thick because right. then it's going to cook too fast on the outside, right. and the inside's not going to be cooked. Since we're dealing with raw shrimp, you want to make sure that it's cooked to yeah. an internal temperature. Chef, of Chef just gave you a great tip: not too thick because you want that raw fish to cook. Okay. So you place the filling towards the bottom of the triangle. Mm -hmm. So you want one of the points facing you, right. um, and then you just roll it up. Um, I guess kind of like a burrito or something, if, if you're used to that sort of thing. We have Italian, Yeah, we kinda. have Mexican, <laughs> and now we have Asian. So there you have it. It's that quick and easy. Okay. So sure. again, you use the egg yolk just to kind of bind the, the spring roll wrapper together. Okay. Now, are we going to fry that? Yep. So the last thing that we're going to do is um, drop it in the oil. Okay. Um, when you're Deep frying at home, you, you might want to use a, a cast iron pan and just use a shallow amount of oil. It's a little bit safer than having, you know, a, a, a full-blown uh, saucepan. Yeah, a saucepan full of yeah, oil. Right. But you want to get the oil to about 350 degrees. Right. That's, you know, the temperature to deep fry. And we're just going to place it right in the oil. That's excellent. And again, you, you know in this case when the, um, the spring rolls are done, you use a meat thermometer and you test the inside and if it says, you know, 140, 145 degrees, then, then that's the safe uh, cooking temperature. So you're actually saying put your thermometer in the spring roll? Yeah, in this case, since we're dealing with, you know, raw with seafood. Shrimp. So. What I usually do is, and I'm going to ask you on this, will they float as they... Yeah, they will float, um, okay. but that's not always an indicator that the spring roll's finished. finished. Again, the best way is to, to test it with a, okay. a meat thermometer just to be yeah. safe. And don't get one of those uh, meat thermometers that looks like you're going to uh, drain the sap out of a tree. You want something, my recommendation, a, a thin needle. Yeah, you can get, you know, a $4 meat thermometer. You can get right. them at most, um, you know, kitchen supply stores right. or like a Sir Letop. Right. Okay. Now, Chef, what happens, uh, while this is cooking, what happens on the sauce? What type of sauce do you recommend? Um, so uh, at, at Seven Star, we make a, you know, home-style sweet Thai chili sauce. So it's a little bit spicy, but it has a good amount of sweetness right, to it. Right. Um, you can buy that at most Asian supermarkets, If I too. remember correctly, your father developed this recipe. Yep. Apple juice and a few yeah, other... Yeah, it's got apple juice. It's got... Um, I believe it or not, we put some uh, Coke, Coca-Cola in, in the... Right, yeah. It's a great sauce. But you can buy a store-bought sauce, really, right? 
Yeah, you can definitely buy a store-bought sauce. It's a lot easier than going through the process. Okay. You know, especially at, at home, you'd probably be doing smaller quantities. So if okay. you're having a dinner party, it might be worth looking right. up a recipe. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to take the opportunity because we're coming close to the end of the show. And uh, Chef Chris brought his sous chef with us today to help uh, as a support in the background. But... He's a little bit bigger than me and <laughs> a little intimidating. And he said, so am I on the show? What was I going to say? Of course you are. So a great guy, though, and a wonderful chef. And he's not Asian, though. He's not Asian, but, but uh, he's, you know, he's learning. He, he's an honorary Asian. And, right. Um, OK, well, chef. We, we don't discriminate in our kitchen. So. OK, um, chef. Chris this Allen. Is Chef Chris, he's my right hand man in the kitchen. Right. And he's, right. Uh, he's bringing us the, the finished product. Excellent. Um, so, this is the sweet Thai chili sauce and the finished um, shrimp and tofu spring rolls. And this is great. And we thank you, Chef, for coming along and helping us make this happen. So, yeah, uh, Chef Chris, number one. Number one, Chef. We call him Big Chris. Okay, Big Chris. Yeah, he was telling me what a great job uh, Chef Chris Allen's doing. And, you know, it's not typical American. And so he's learning a whole new culture of cooking. So thanks again, Chris, for coming. You can smile at the camera. Thank you very much. Okay, see, now if you'd see the size of the thermometer, this is what I would recommend. And, and when you're taking the, uh, the, th the temperature, you want to stick it in uh, sideways just so that it, it takes an accurate read. And what are you going, halfway? Yeah, halfway. Just um, the point where the thermometer starts to curve, that's where the, the accurate um, okay. temperature is taken. Great, so. great. Excellent. And that's it. So there's our Chef. shrimp and tofu spring rolls. Absolutely great. And we're very pleased that we had the opportunity to present this show. As I've told you, Chef Chris Lynn is a wonderful chef. And as somebody told me once, he blushes every time I say this. Uh, yeah, here he goes. Don't <laughs> say it. I have a friend that's a chef, and I asked you to watch the show the last time he did the Chinese New Year. And she's from Ireland. I said, so Jeanette, what did you think? Oh, Joe, he's just lovely on the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and every time I tell Chris, he doesn't believe me, but it's true. Of course, my next question was, what about moi? Uh, oh, well, you know, Joe, he was <laughs> terrific. So that was my little story. But Chris is a, a great guy. I have a lot of respect for him. So again, on behalf of the Chef's Table series and the Chef's Table Foundation, our crew, and again, we'd love to thank the Sons of Italy Lodge in Roslindale for being our facility host. Uh, it's been wonderful. And if you're interested in having us come to your town and do a four week cooking series with some of the great restaurants, please contact us on our website. That's the Chef's Table Series TV. If you just give us a second, we want you to take a look at these three wonderful dishes. Okay, fabulous meal, and really intermediate skill, and you could do this at home. And if you have a little trouble, invite Mr. Nice on the Eyes, and maybe he'll make a personal visit. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's craft beer pairing. My name is Carol O'Connor, co-host of the Chef's Table series and I'm here with Kelsey Roth of Craft Beer Cellar. I asked Kelsey to choose a beer that would go well with the pork and Thai basil, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. So that dish was made by Christopher Lynn. He owns Seven Star Street Bistro in Rosendale. So Kelsey, what did you choose today? So 
thinking about that dish, mm -hmm. um, the pork, the Thai basil, I think it had some red peppers in there. Yeah. Um, those are going to be some, some fairly delicate flavors. Um, so I wanted something that was a little bit lighter that didn't have, um, you know, a lot of weight to it, but was also spicy enough mm -hmm. and has enough character to work with that Thai basil and the peppers and the pork as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I went with, uh, this is a Dunkelweizen. Uh, this is uh, from Germany. You pronounced and that so well. <laughs> it's my German heritage. <laughs> but uh, so this one in particular, uh, so a Dunkelweizen is, uh, a lot of people know of like German Hefeweizens, which are wheat beers, um, yeah. great to drink in the summertime. Um, this is a similar style, but is actually used with some darker malts. So it's got mm. a little bit more caramel flavor to it. And um, I Dessert. always think these beers are like bananas foster in a glass. Um, you, get, really? you get some banana <laughs> notes, you get some caramel notes, um, but also, you also get a little bit of hint of clove, but it's also not very heavy. Wow. Um, this one in particular is interesting. It's brewed um, by monks in Germany. Um, so uh, it's the Kloster Index, yes. uh, and it's on top of Holy Mountain in Munich. Um, wow, so they're, history. They're, uh, yeah, they, they got those beautiful monasteries at the top mm -hmm. of the mountain. It's one of the best places in the world to have a beer. Um, so. And we're just going to have it here. At, we're filming at Barrel Farm in Concord. <laughs> so we're just going to try it out. It's a close out. second. It's a so. close second, yeah, because it's beautiful here. <laughs> oh, look at that color. That is a nice color. So you can see right off the bat, this has you know, a great head to it. Yes. Um, yeah, oh normally goodness. you would normally you would get this in like you know one of the big tall tall this, base glasses. This does smell like banana foster. Yeah, so yeah, I mean right off the bat you get the banana nose. Yeah. Um, and you get uh, when you and a little bit hints of caramel as well. Y yeah. Um, but that. Uh, I swish them a little bit more. Yeah, you get a little bit of pineapple too, uh, some tropical fruits, and I think that's just going to go so good with the Thai basil um, and kind of add. Uh, you know, a little bit of a fruity flair to the savory notes in that yeah, dish. Yeah, funky. I would never think to pair this with that dish. All right, I'm gonna try um, it. it. Tastes like dessert. Yeah. <laughs> well, it smells like dessert. Ooh, that. You know what? I have to say, this tastes very delicious. Yeah. But it's bananas foster. <laughs> but yeah, and I love bananas. It's, yeah, it's but it's still light. It's not as heavy as bananas yeah. foster is. Um, yeah, so very light mouthfeel. So it's not going to overpower that mm -hmm. dish. Um, but that little that sweetness, the uh, the fruit flavors, I think are just going to go is, so nice. This is very yeah. enjoyable. Mm -hmm. um, oh, was I going to ask you? Yeah, this is very tasty. I love it. You definitely drink definitely drink this on your own. Yeah, it's tasty. <laughs> And this, uh, you know, certainly mm. would go well with a dessert as well. Maybe um, <laughs> something that's a little bit of a lighter dessert. Maybe some ice cream or something like that. <laughs> Not like bread pudding. Mm. Certainly, yeah. How about, how about banana bread pudding with caramel and vanilla ice cream? Well, of course, or bananas foster. Pair it with bananas oh, foster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> but then wow. you're drinking bananas foster and eating bananas foster. Yeah. But then you get all too banana ish. Yeah. Oh, Kelsey, but, I love this. is excellent. Yeah, thank you. I love thank it. You. This is very good. So everyone, this has been the craft beer pairing for Christopher Lynn's Pork with Thai Basil. And I'm Carol O'Connor, co-host of the Chef's Table series. And I'm Kelsey Roth, I'm with Craft Beer Cellar, and we're a proud supporter of the Chef's Table Foundation. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's Found to Table tip. I am Carol O'Connor, co-host of the Chef's Table series, and with me is Steve Farrell, Farmer's Farmer of Farrell Farm in Concord. So everyone, we're in the greenhouse at Farrell Farm, and we're going to talk about spinach. Spinach! Popeye spinach! <laughs> Makes you strong! <laughs> Feel good! Look at all this, huh? Well, this, this beautiful. particular greenhouse we're in, yes. <clears throat> we run without heat, that's oh. why we just got through putting these reinforce supports up mm -hmm. so it won't collapse under the snow like it did last oh, winter. Oh, okay, smart. <laughs> yeah, especially last winter. Right, that was a tough one. It was. But uh, this is something you could do on a small scale at home, just like we do here. Oh, okay. There's no heat in the greenhouse. We planted this spinach uh, late September. Now, right now we're middle of November. And uh, it's been growing nicely here. We can have a baby spinach out of it now, and uh, 
we can keep harvesting and when it gets really cold yep. it won't freeze up it'll just stop growing and take a rest and then when you get a few warm days it'll grow a little more so we'll, we'll probably harvest this one more time this fall but then uh, come February and March it'll take right off and we'll get more harvest out of that so we have a early nice uh, early spring vegetable nice fresh green spinach and we have drip irrigation wow. here to water it so we can just turn the water on and water the whole greenhouse mm -hmm. for an hour every now and then but uh, you get the sun gives it quite a bit of heat in here on a sunny day even mm -hmm. when it's cold and the soil might freeze just a little bit in the winter but it won't freeze much at all and not enough to hurt the spinach. So you'll harvest it and then it'll just grow again? Right. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it just, you, know, you can harvest it three or four times if you just pick the leaves. And where would these be picked? Well, like, towards the end of the month? Well, or? probably so. We're picking, still picking some in the field now and yeah. after we finish that, we'll do some in oh, here. Oh, Steve, this is beautiful. And it's a low, a low cost oh, crop yeah. to grow this way. Especially for people at no home. No heat or anything. Yeah, yeah. this is yeah. great. Yeah. There's so much you can do with spinach. You can oh, saute yeah. it, you can eat it plain. Salads are plain. And it's really good for you. It is. It's really good for you, everyone. Healthy tip. So, <laughs> Steve, thanks for sharing that, oh. um, how to prepare for spinach. This is great. Love it. So, everyone, this has been this week's Farm to Table Tip with Steve Verrill of Verrill Farm. I'm Carol O'Connor, and we'll see you next week. Hello everyone and welcome to the restaurant interview segment of the Chef's Table Series. I'm Carol O'Connor and I am here with Chef Owner Christopher Lynn of the Seven Star Street Bistro, located at 153 Belgrade Ave in Roslindale. So Chris, thanks for being on the segment with me today. Thanks for having me. So Christopher, tell me about your culinary background. So uh, I grew up in the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. um, my father had a restaurant in Newton Center for uh, 20 some years. Um, so I was working in the restaurant since I was probably seven years old in various positions. That must have been fun. Yeah, it was yeah. a lot of fun. Most of the time I was probably in the way, but it was, <laughs> it was fun never, nevertheless. Mm -hmm. After I went to uh, college in St. Louis, um, I kind of wow. you know, reassessed what I wanted to do with my life. And mm -hmm. I, I loved, I always loved food and cooking, you know, having grown up in mm -hmm. the restaurant industry. So I decided to go to culinary school in San Francisco. <gasps> Really? Which one? Um, so I went to the CCA, yep. which, um, right in you know downtown San Francisco, and um, you know worked in restaurants there. And oh, that must have been a great experience. Yeah, it was awesome. Oh. and I you know always worked in food service yes. throughout my entire life. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Yeah. Now tell me how you came up with this name for the restaurant and what the concept around it. So um, you know, growing up in the restaurant mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, most of my great memories of food were associated with my father and family. Mm -hmm. It's a real tradition. Yes. Um, you know, being from a you know Taiwanese family, mm -hmm. food is very centric in our culture. So I wanted to tribute my father in some way and his restaurant, all the oh. work he had put in. So that's where Seven Star comes from. Mm -hmm. And I called it a street bistro because I wanted to kind of come up with a casual, um, casual name that would you know imply, you know, somewhat quick service, mm -hmm. casual environment, but. You know, we're in an urban setting, so I kind of thought Correct. that like street bistro is cool. a fun name. So, what? How would you describe the cuisine here? Ta Taiwanese or Asian or? Um, I'd say it's chi Szechuan Chinese yes. uh, cuisine, with a Taiwanese, a strong Taiwanese influence, mm -hmm. and um, you know, we definitely have a Western influence. You know, yes. just to, we we have fun with the menu. So oh, good. It's very casual. Tell me um, some of the dishes that people would find on this menu, like continuously. Um, so uh, most of our menu items mm -hmm. are, are staples. We keep them here because we have regulars who right. would probably um, regulars love be, the same. Menu. Yeah, they love Hate the changes. same thing. Yep. So it's you know we try and keep things pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. um, our baby back ribs are oh, one wow. of our most popular items. Um, they're slow cooked, fall yes. off the bone. Um, our pork with Thai basil is a really mm -hmm. popular item. That must have a kick to it, right? Yeah, it has yep. a little spice. Mm -hmm. You know, Szechuan cooking is al is always um, full of spice yes. and. You know, we use chili peppers mm -hmm. and, you know, Szechuan peppercorn, all different, you know, oh, different wow. fun ingredients like that. You know, our our scallion pancake rolled with roast oh, yeah, beef. Yeah. That's a that. That's a Taiwanese dish. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, there's our hot and sour soup. It's, you know, something mm -hmm. we brought from my father's restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, 
There are a lot of vegetable dishes as well. Yep, so yeah. because we make everything to order, it's right. really easy for us to modify dishes to make them vegetarian oh, or you know gluten-free in yes. certain cases. Mm -hmm. So we try our best to accommodate everyone. That's great. Yeah. Now, um, I heard, Christopher, that you are expanding. Tell oh, me yeah. about that. Um, so we are expanding. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a long process, but we're really excited to um, you know, we have eight seats now, and mm -hmm. we're, we're excited to maybe add 16 seats. So oh, we'll still be perfect. pretty small. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to have a, a restroom and mm -hmm. servers. So, you know, a lot of our customers, or we have customers or guests that come from, you know, as far as a couple hours away, to be honest. Wow. So sometimes it's, it's, it will be really nice to offer them, you know, a full dine-in experience mm -hmm. for, you know, for those who travel from afar yes. and, and for, you know, for the locals. We're yeah. a real neighborhood restaurant. I think that will be great. And I love the decor. I liked how you put the birch pieces outside. Oh, yeah. Love we, it. It's we, so inviting. Yeah, we try and, um, you know, make it a fun environment. Exactly. So. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, I'm going to ask the last question. Sure. What are your three main ingredients, if you had to choose, um, for to, cooking? For this, per, you know, for yep. our, okay, um, I would have to say, you know, the Chinese aromatics, mm -hmm. ginger, garlic, scallion, essential. Oh. They're, you know, they're full of flavor. They are. You know, they're almost they're in almost every dish we yeah. cook, so in some form or mm. fashion. So. And I love all those; they yeah. go very well together. Definitely. Perfect. Well, Christopher, thank you so much for being on the segment today with me, Thanks and good luck with the expansion. Thank you very Perfect. much. So, everyone, this has been the restaurant interview segment of the Chef's Table series. I'm Carol O'Connor, and I'll see you next week. Show, you know, this is a critical step in cooking, and it's called mise en place. And mise en place simply means have everything in its place. So, chef, as I lift this, what is this? So uh, this is uh, really important in Chinese cooking. It's a cornstarch slurry. Um, it's what we use to thicken, um, thicken the sauces. Right. Um, this is just some ground white pepper. Right, and white pepper is very common in the Asian cuisine. Correct? Yeah, I, I, I like the, the flavor of, of white pepper. and right. It's got a milder finish to it. Okay. These are just black sesame seeds. We're going to use these for 